Hey Office Rikers, welcome back to the Joker's Wild Review video. The chases and super rares. Super rares then chases, but... Uh, In that order, yes. Typically probably one you've all been waiting for. This is one that we get the most views on most quickly. Just to help you decide whether you want uh, these part of your collection or whether they're worth shelling the dough out to get. So, we're just going to lead right into it. I'm going to start off with Mr. Freeze. Uh, he has the uh, Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Underworld armor, and scientist keywords. I like that. It's right off keywords. the bat, armor. You can drop a Jocasta on him. Sure. Um, he's 90 points. Uh, super rare, of course. Has the Batman enemy team ability. Uh, his trait is when he hits with a ranged attack, give each character, uh, hit character, excuse me, an action token, and after actions resolve, attach an ice wall marker to one hit character, unless it is attached to another character. So he only has one bolt, but there are ways to give him multiple bolts, of course. Exactly. And then uh, the ice wall marker, as long as the ice wall marker is attached, that character can't be moved or placed and modifies its defense value by minus two. Remove it at the end of that character's turn and deal that character one penetrating damage or give any adjacent character a power action to remove the wall. So you can chip him out of the ice. You know, it's interesting that they got that ice wall marker off to the side. It's not part of the, the trait. So that makes me wonder if he KOs... It still stays. If it still does its thing, just like uh, Anarchy. Anarchy's bombs, because they didn't they didn't specify it this way for Firefly, or for uh, the other guys. So, yeah, I think that's the deterring factor on that. There's been a lot of questions on Clicks FX markers leaving when the character KOs. I think because it has that specific text on the card, it can stay until it is removed. Nice. Just like the Anarchy Tokens. And then his special defensive power, uh, Mr. Freeze can use Toughness. Now, at the beginning of your turn, heal Mr. Freeze a number of clicks equal to three minus the number of adjacent opposing characters. So just to clarify, at the beginning of your turn is when your opponent's turn ends and yours begins. No free actions before that happens. But he only heals three minus the number. So if there's no one there, he'll heal three. If there's people around him, he won't heal as much. Right. And then uh, Frozen Aura, uh, special damage power. Uh, adjacent opposing characters modify their attack and damage values by minus one. So you really got to figure, do I want to be next to somebody or do I want to be able to regen because that last uh, two clicks is where it gets that toughness and the free gen, basically. Yeah, the, the icy influence that he has. That's pretty awesome. Uh, sidestep, Pensai, uh, Invuln. It's a beautiful starting click. And uh, he keeps, he loses the invuln, but keeps that pen side and drops the energy explosion with, of course, only one bolt. Would have been nice to see two, but Mr. Freeze, he comically has accurate, gun. has one gun, so I'm totally okay with that. And then uh, he goes to that uh, regen power, so really, it seems like the theme that I've been seeing a lot with these figures, I noticed it when I was editing our videos, a lot of it's get them in there and get them out of there. So they're, they're going back to that possibility where, you know, your guys... They aren't taken out, and you can get them out of there. They have a good chance of coming back into the fight. But overall, for 90 points, uh, I think he's pretty well worth it. All right. You know, I played him. Couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, but, uh, you know, my dice were pretty cold. Maybe we dice, start calling yeah. that uh, the Mr. Freeze effect. <laughs> All right, what do you got, Eric? So next up, we have uh, the Riddler. A lot of text on this guy. 50 points, Batman enemy TA, um, zero range. So, first and foremost, how he deals with the bat. Share attack with Riddler. He gets this. After action resolve, the character can use Outwit as a free action, only targeting the hit target. So you do have to connect the hit. If you miss, you cannot use the Outwit. It's kind of a bummer. The next trick thing he's got is his little present, or his clue. The clue. I'll give you a hint, Bat Brain. The Riddler begins the game with the clue token attached. Give him a free action to either reattach the clue to Riddler or choose an opposing character within six squares and line of fire, detach the clue, and put it into a clear, unoccupied space within six squares of that character. So no line of fire from the character were needed. Oh, that'd be so messed up. And when you do, choose a standard power that hits her can't so ch choose a standard power. That character cannot use that power until they either move into or through the square with the clue token. So the Riddler can essentially take a power from you and say you can't use it, so if it even can't be ignored or countered, you can't use it. 
You have to go fetch your clue to get it back. You know what's really good with that? What? Stealth. Yeah. Batman TA grants the use of stealth. Yes. And then I say, you can't use stealth. So your Batman TA is now useless. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Choose a point of character within six person line of fire. He has to be able to see Batman first. Has to be able to see him first, but what? if you did manage to catch him when he wasn't hiding in the shadows. In the shadows, yes. And it's a free action to do so, so. Standard power. Standard power. Standard power is stealth. Oh, it doesn't say, doesn't say possessed. It says that they can use, and the Batman team ability says can use stealth. Choose a standard power. I'm sorry, I can't use that power. Yep, you're right. So if you can get Joker in a position where he can see Batman, you could basically make it so he can't use his Batman team ability unless somebody goes and gets that clue for him or he gets it himself. And I love the fact that it's within six squares, so if there's like... You're on an indoor map, and you've got a building right over there. You're just like, boop. Yep. Or an elevated terrain, clear terrain, that they have to go all the way over there and then back up and around to go get it. It's very tricksy, guys. Plus, he also has outwit on his whole dial. Four clicks deep, has reflexes and stealth, so he actually hides in stealth as well, so he can't be shot at. He is going to be one of those figures on your force who's just causing havoc. He, he's like saying, you can't use his power. Ah, uh, with that power, you can't use him because I'm here. He is doing that on the team. And if you can somehow pull his attack off him to get that extra outwit, <laughs> holy cow, you might as well be beast at that point. <laughs> that's, just about. That's three counters. Yeah. Just about. All right. Um, weaknesses, though, one good punch to the jaw, he is probably dead. That's Edward Nigma. How, how would you make him better? Make him better? Um... Same thing with the Batman enemies, guys. Play with Batman enemies. If he can pot off 11s, and if he ever gets based up, he does have an 18 up close. He can really possibly hit back. He only has one damage, though, but all the outwits, he'll get rid of everything in his way to hit you for that one damage. Perplexes, get those. Empowers can help. A lot of Joker thugs have those, you know, so. You could also use some wild cards. Spider-Man, family, yeah, there you go. calculators. Always think about wild cards, guys. Like, the fact that both Sinister Syndicate and Batman Enemy have gotten a lot better lately. Wild cards like Spider-Man and Tabulators, all day get benefit from these. Like the Rogues from the Flash set, a lot of them have either have have, 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 have better actually. A lot of them do. A lot of them do. Because there isn't a Rogues keep TA, is there? Nope. No. Mm. There's an ATA. There's an ATA. Thoughts. All right. Up next, the Penguin number fifty, Gotham City, Gotham City Underworld. He must run this town. Oh. Oh. Gotham's the underworld. Only keyword. Okay. Um, he is a whopping 40 points for this Whoa. super rare. So, uh, look at his dial. Kind of a short dial, but uh, his big to-do is his penguins. Uh, first, he's got his how he deals with the bat. When you borrow the attack action, you may give a robo-penguin a move action as a free action. Hmm. And then, uh, my own deadly rookery. Give the penguin a power action. To place an adjacent robo-penguin bystander. Of your choice, as described on this card, give the penguin a power action to give each Robo Penguin a move action as a free action. So, a lot of power actions to get those penguins going, but once you got three of them out there... It's a slow roll, for sure. Uh, his special damage power, he has his whole dial. My best weapon to date, he begins the game with a Robo Penguin attached. When placing a Robo Penguin bystander on the map, you may remove the Robo Penguin from Penguin's base to use it to represent the bystander. This bystander modifies its combat values by plus one, and when it's KO'd, reattach the Robo Penguin to Penguin's base. So, you don't have to use the one that's attached, but if you do, it gets plus one to its stats, which uh, really is no laughing matter, especially for the running shot, pen sight, energy shield deflection, or even the uh, sidestep pulse wave toughness, or the uh, charge exploit combat reflexes version. They're all tiny. They can be carried by anybody. And their movement actions don't count toward your action total. So they move out there. You can pick them up and move them. And then you can give them a power action to... You give Penguin a power action to move them all again. And if you so happen to take Penguin's attack power and hit on that attack, you can move one again as a free action. Based off his... Yep. Thing, a know? lot of Penguins move around, but... Uh, 18 defend, goes into willpower, stealth the whole dial, has the Batman enemy TA... Overall, it, he's great for your swarm teams. He's, he's got a slow wind-up, but he is not unique. 
No, he is unique. He Never is. mind. I see that silver ring on there. Yeah. So he is unique, unfortunately. So uh, you know, if you if you're a fan of those swarms and you think you can make it work, make it happen. Get those uh, penguins out there. Honestly, I would think that Devil Dino, for what these guys do, is probably going to be a better bet. This is because you generate three of them at a time. But he has an endless supply of them. It's just slower. That's true. He is 40 points. If you have a leadership on your team and can keep getting tokens off of there him. There you go. There's thinking. That could be really, really... He has to have willpower late dial, though, too, late, right? Late dial, yeah. So he could go off that route if he gets hit. But. And the defend 18, you know, if you've got somebody who does leadership that doesn't have very high defense, he's going to be able to keep him alive with that 18. But overall, weaknesses, short dial, no damage reducers. He does have stealth, but one good shot. And he's toast. Make him better, like we said. Give him leadership. Give him something to get those penguins into play. Keep him way back. Like, there's no reason to get him in the fight, unfortunately. Yeah, really. But for 40 points, he's a welcome addition to any team, really. Yeah. Just for those added penguins. All right. <laughs> okay. <Bye>. Next up, <laughs> we have the Green Lantern. This is Alan Scott of the JSA. The super rare. The um, much anticipated... Yeah, when we all saw him preview, we were like, oh my gosh, what does he do? He's very interesting. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> very interesting. So he's 35 points. He's probably one of the cheapest super rares I've ever seen, right? the Penguin. He only has one power, energy deflection, uh, top battle 17 defense, so he goes to a 19 from range. Standard power, he has one standard, standard power. power. His, uh, he has flight, 7 range, JSA 2 ability, has 10, 10, 17, 3. That is the usual standard on a usual figure of what? 75 points or higher, you'd say? Roughly. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere from 50 to 75. Yeah. No powers, though. So it's like, you couldn't give him running shot for a click? <laughs> a click. A click. Or enhancement. Enhancement. Barrier. A Green Lantern stuff. Anyways. So, simpler time. I'll just say have this. Basically, what his says when you replace it with his defense, they get plus one against range attacks. Pretty, pretty well, pretty good. Now, the cool thing is his quick effects marker, this Green Lantern's Light. So once per turn, give Green Lantern, Green Lantern can use Barrier. Oh, there's his Barrier. Right oh, there. hey, 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 one square. He can use it as a free action, but only to place one Barrier marker. When he uses Barrier, he may substitute one Barrier marker that he would place with the Light Wall marker. So does it can use barrier period and then can use it as free action? Or? Yes. Okay. So he does have normal so he barrier. Does, does have the normal barrier. Cool. Whew. I saw a period. I was like, okay, good. Thirty-five point barrier guy. Not terrible. And then he does have the free action to place one per turn at the beginning turns of the game, guys. That can put some seven range out barriers that could be very helpful to you. I thought you just said it was strike. instead. No, no. Hold on. Oh, okay. He can place it a normal barrier marker. When he uses it, he may substitute. A barrier marker to put the light wall marker down. I thought it said he could only place one if he does as a free action. He does. Okay. But it's still a regular barrier black okay. brown marker. Unless he wants to substitute it for the green marker. Makes sense? I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Alright, alright. Next. And let's see here. I'm lost. When he would, okay. With light wall marker. And place it in a character square within range. Positioning it one side along the edge, so it's going to matter where you place it on a figure because it kind of creates another wall. And it says, this marker acts as a wall. If you place the light marker, it is removed at the beginning of your next turn. Unique modifier. Opposing characters just to any of his light wall, light wall or barrier markers, or barrier markers, can't use stealth and modify their defense by minus one. Whoa, so his barrier cancels stealth too? Yes. Wow, I think the value of this guy just went brrrr. That's interesting that it says that. He's a stealth buster for 35 points and you make a wall. Now you just need somebody who can shoot through walls. Hmm. That is really neat because it does say you place it on a character, so you just put it on him like with a barrier. Oh. So, no, no, no. And you cut off adjacencies. You put it behind him and you get somebody who can shoot and can use Force Blast, so now you're knocking them back into a wall. Oh, wow. And you're busting their stealth in the process. Wow, I totally discounted this guy from the second he came out. He is not that bad. That's a lot of utility for 35 points. That's very interesting. 
I did not know it counted just for the those and barrier markers. Reading, guys. Wow. It is a thing. <laughs> well, when you see a wall of text, you get like, <laughs> confused and like, there's just, I don't know if I want to read all this or not. Does it really matter? Let's have points. What does it do? I, I would say from this point on, we need to know that it matters. Yes. Because I thought, oh, wow, he gets to make one barrier marker that breaks stealth. But no, he gets to use barrier. He gets to use a full barrier. He gets to replace one of those with the uh, special marker. Or he can do a free action and just make one additional one and can also replace that with a barrier marker. Anybody standing next to his barrier can't use stealth, according to what Eric has read there. Yep. And then uh, anybody with the special marker does what? No, no, for anything, it says right here, unique modifier, opposing characters adjacent to any of his light wall markers or barrier markers. So what's the point of the light wall marker? Because what it does is it puts somebody in it and makes a wall just behind that character or on whatever side you want it on. Okay. You can get rid of adjacency with that. Oh, that's true. So if you're adjacent, you're just like, boop, wall, bye. Like, say, Joker with his thug. Thug is no longer adjacent. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And it cuts off his stealth if he's in stealth. I think this guy just made it on my wants list and instead my, of my and my list. One, and minus one of their defense for everyone to tell this marker and his barriers. Jeez. Whoa. Now, it's, of course, minus one, period, but it's still a Unique modifier, one. that's right. Just unique modifier it happens once. But, uh, I mean, weaknesses, he doesn't have a short dial, but you can keep him very much well at range. Seven range is not too shabby in this day and age. Um, make him stronger. Pairing with JSA, I think honestly giving, I'm saying it in this video, any one of the JSA people paired up with the KC Green Lantern, best team ever. Because you just then given a 20 printed defense to any JSA member. I'm out. <laughs> just throw in the towel. You take it. You got the win. Because what, Green Lantern's 170 points? Yeah. Right? So that's 205 points for those two together. That's a lot of Green Lantern grossness on your team. Green arrows. Yeah. Green Lanterns. Just seriously. just make a green team. It's a green team. That is pretty cool, guys. It's not a whole lot to do there, but there's a lot of utility in that marker I didn't realize before. Oh, we did forget to call out thanks to Randall again for Penguin, as well as this next figure. Yes, thank you, Randall, for loaning us these pieces. Uh, Johnny Thunder, number 53A. And no, we do not have the Prime. We were not able to get a hold of one. We did have fans. Uh, offer to send that to us. We Thank appreciate that. But again, we explained in previous video with Christmas and all that. We just didn't want to take that risk. Um, so Johnny Thunder, All Star Squadron, Justice Society, Mystical Past, and Soldier. A lot of good keywords there. Uh, his trait, my wish. Gee, how to say it? I want to win at this hero clicks game. So uh, at the beginning of your turn, roll a d6 that can't be rerolled. You get one. All his combat values minus one. I mean, sure. Get back. Two through five. He can use a, a, a standard power of your choice. Just pick one. Cool. Whatever one. On a six, modify his combat values by plus one, and pick his standard powers of your choice. So one is your only bad roll. Hmm. And uh, any results last until your next turn. Cannot be rolled, cannot be replaced by good old Mr. Mixie. Just take that chance. Roll that dice. Roll that one, Eric. Roll that one. <laughs> uh, ones. Damage power, the most powerful JSMA member, if only he'd realize it. I, I think that stands uh, pretty well to reason there. Uh, he can use Perplex and Prob Control, but both only to target opposing characters. So, Defense can't prob, prob. Can't prob my friends, can't perplex my friends, but I can definitely do it to you all day long. Uh, he does have two different point values, uh, one at 125, one at 75. 125 is when he gets his uh, most powerful JSA member for his first two clicks with Sidestep and Invincible. Again, pretty much get to pick a power, unless you're so unfortunate to roll a one. If you roll a six, he's looking at nine, 11, 19, and four Woo. on the top click. Two clicks here, third click in, he goes to 12 face teleport, uh, freak, yeah, let's see, that's, uh, word, pulse wave, that one, uh, invuln and prob control, so he gets regular prob at that point. Nice. And then, uh, for his 75 point click, he starts with face teleport, pulse wave, uh, invuln with an 18 and prob control with his special trait, so he could be rocking a 13, 10, 19, and 4, again, with pulse wave. With a prop control for yourself, you know, I'll, I'll hit that 10. Don't worry. 
and then drops into sidestep with 12 attack with combat or close combat expert and combat reflexes with Dang. three damage and 17 defense. So that's a 19 with a possible 12 and 5 or 14 and 3 if I'm standing next to you. And he gets that for another click, you know, attack power goes down one, and then he's done. And uh, he's got the JSA. So uh, overall, wow. Taking power figure. just definitely a lot, bring a lot to the table for both 75 and 125 points. I mean, wow. Um, as far as weaknesses, well, 75 points. He's got a really short dial, one pensai off of that uh, invuln or exploit or even an outwit. He's done. That's 75 points off the board. On the higher end, uh, you know, you could pick Super Senses as your, your rollout, hoping for to avoid uh, Precision Strike, but, I mean, then you'd have Super Senses and Invincible to start off, but you'd probably pick something more Shit, aggressive. Change. The Swiss Army Knife thing is always great, but, uh, you know, not 100% reliable. Still really good, but not 100% reliable. Make him better, you know, uh, pair him with some people to boost his values. If you don't get those plus ones, you're going to need that boost to your attack or your damage to make your Pensai Energy Explosion with one bolt, two bolts, excuse me, six range. Ooh, there you go. Um, really worth it. I mean, he's he's definitely Swiss Army Knife, and they gave him the right type of stats, but he could need a little help here and there. Possibly. At 75 points, you know, you've got a Swiss Army Knife support piece and that you really need to make sure it doesn't get hit. So JSA, he already starts with an 18. I don't know how you're going to get any higher than that, but uh, do what you can to keep him alive. Okay. Next up we have Geoforce. Geoforce. Justice League, Outsiders. He's a super rare? Oh um, crap. <laughs> we had to relive that moment just for a moment. Just, just, just one more time. <laughs> I had hopes for my brick, and he wasn't one of them. Okay? Oh, I'm back. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, 160 points. He is the high ender of the whole set. Yep. Highest point value in the whole set. Seven range, two bolts. Um, Outsiders TA. Uh, no indom. That's okay, though. He has running shot, pensai, 11 attack, 17 with impervious, and three damage leadership. He's one of the other big leaders of the Outsiders there, apparently. Uh, drops into uh, tens and then has the special attack, uh, special movement power called Geoforce can use charge. G uh, Force blast and move through blocking and break it when he does. Lava jet bursts, makes sense. Has that for the with super strength, 18, 17s, threes and twos. Last two he has earthbound, with Quake, Night Attack, 16 with Regen, and 2 damage with Close Combat Expert. So, he does get knocked into Oblivion where he can't fly no more, but that's okay. Earthbound, play down. The cool thing that he does is this trait that he has. Lord of the Land. Geoforce can use Barrier, comma, but only as a free action and only to place one Barrier Marker. Uno. One. One. Only, period. Just the one blocking. These markers, however, are not removed at the beginning of your next turn. After actions resolve, if the map has more than four such markers, remove one of them. More than four. So if you're at five, you have to take one down. So he does do barrier, but over turns. And it's always a free action. So he can strategically place those in such a way where your opponent has to think about what's going on. Riddler, I'm going to make the clue over here, and over the next four turns, he's just going to box it in so you can't get to it. <laughs> oh, that's so unfair. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> that's I didn't rude. Even think about that. Just, I mean, it's going to take four turns, but, you know, you could, like, one, you could two, strike three, it too, if and you then, right. yeah, you could make three. Make three somewhere. And then he could <laughs> drop the clue in there, and you make the fourth one, or you can make all four, then you can just drop the clue in there, because he doesn't need line of fire to where he puts that's it. That's true. <laughs> Unless you have flying, you can't go get it. That's rude. Out what you're flying. Because <laughs> he can do that. <laughs> can't use flight. <laughs> no, send power. He does have oh, regular outwit. That's outwit. true. true. He does have regular outwit. Oh. So that's pretty neato. One thing that I, I played against him in the release day, um, actually Randall played him, and he did this cool thing where he would, like, I hit him really hard, he'd run away, box himself in every single turn, regen, and then burst out of it. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Kind of That's a cool, cool strategy, kind of hide him and 
barriers. But, uh, yeah, um, making him better, honestly, Just League team would love him on their team. Get, uh, making up some barriers so they can't be shot at. Um, outsiders just on zone, keep values down from the shoot. I mean, he has an 11, so 17s are like no joke for him. He's like, well, whatever, I'll lock you down your no ESD for you, and then I'll hit you for three damage, Pensai. Make a free wall or barrier or blocking train. Yep. Put our man next to it next turn. Our man's got a light object. There you go. Whoop. There's yeah. also the Wonder Woman from, I believe it's Trinity War, that just gets to rip a rock out of the wall. Yeah, pretty sure they're both either wall or blocking terrain, right? Yep. Pretty sure. So, he does create those opportunities for the Wonder Woman's, the Hour Man, anyone who grabs other type of walls, that's a pretty handy trick right there. Also, like we said, can keep a figure you put right in front of their face, you have to like now move, you know. Good, the good way to block those lines of fire. It's really rude if you like outwit their speed power first. They can't move. <laughs> so, so they they're yeah. looking at a rock and then they can't move and attack and they're just kind of sitting there. It's like, well, dang. Such a good view, and now it's gone. <laughs> um, weaknesses, uh, vulnerable to outwit. Lose that impervious, he's going down to Earthbound Town. Earthbound <laughs> Town. <laughs> so, keep aware of that, We're going to call that Bound Town. Bound Town. <laughs> that or Earth Town, I don't know. Earth Town. That's Geo Horse, guys. All right. Up next, Man Bat, number 55. <gasps> Gotham City Animal Scientist. So if you do happen upon one of these, just take a moment. I admire the sculpt. It's fantastic. I mean, they really just, wow. I think the majority of the reason why people want this figure is because of the sculpt. Uh, I've played against him. He really wasn't that much of a threat, even with borrowing a 12 from Ra's al Ghul. But, I mean, gorgeous figure. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, his special trait, uh, once per turn... Uh, he does the how I deal with the bat. You get you to use steel energy for your attack. That is something worth calculating at 55 points. It's like, oh, I've been poisoned. Or, oh, I took a push damage. I'll Could you imagine man, steel that's... energy with Shiva with that flurry? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and then uh, he can use blaze claws, fangs, and steel energy on every click but his first one. It's understandable they didn't give it to him on his first click. Uh, starts with the 10, drops to 9s. You are going to have to borrow... An attack value and one damage the whole way, so you're rolling that blade. My favorite. Yeah, but uh, it can be outwitted. That sucks. Yeah, big weakness there. Bloop. There goes your your blades, all your damage. He does have charge and then sidestep with flight, so you can transport somebody in, carry in somebody who has a higher attack value with Batman enemy, borrow it, and then uh, go to to Blades Town with him. But uh, one thing I would have loved to do if you guys watched my Erx X team with the Killing Joke Joker. Firefly is a good opportunity because he does have that great range running shot. But this guy, barring his 11, carrying with that Joker. Synergy, carrying him around. Not too shabby. That's good. Um, but really, no. We, we've been saying this the whole set. No defense reducers this whole time. He does get steel energy, so you do want him in the fight, slashing it up, getting that life back. But, uh, yeah. I wish he had Flurry in those, in those last three flurry. clicks. Isn't a Katana step. Grant Flurry if you already have Blaze Claws? The card? Yes. The ID. So does... Uh, swordsman. Swordsman. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, make him better. You know, I would dare say drop a Hope, but Hope Buster Torso on this one. He uh, needs a something on his defense. That naked 17. Yeah. With how many clicks? Like six clicks of life? Yep, six. It's too short of that not even toughness. I know he's just a bat and Fine. bats... Yeah. Find a way to give him flurry. Take advantage of that steel energy. Maybe even just a regen to keep him in the fight and just annoy your opponent all day. Turn that six clicks into twelve clicks. Just keep coming back. If you also have Superman ID, give him invincible. Yep, that would be uh, a good one. That'd be not terrible. Would not be bad at all. So fifty-five points. Uh, yeah, scientist keyword could be helpful in some manners. All right, let's break down this funky fella. The Plastic Man. I was super duper excited for this figure when I heard it was getting released. I, I have the ID card. I've been wanting to really use it and see how well it does. I'm not sure how yet, but let's figure this out. So, Plastic Man has just the keyword and detective. Perfect. That's all he should have. Spot on. Unless they made a Gumby keyword. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> a treat and damage power. That's all he has. 
Dance power happens every other click with perplex. Sounds good. Trait says tag. You're it. He's reaching around. Gotcha. <laughs> Plastic man can use shape change, comma, but succeeds on a four through six, period. 50% shape change. I do like that. That is a great power. Totally makes sense for him. When Plastic Man hits a single opposing character, after actions resolve, attach the tag marker. The beautiful specs marker so there. So, I punch you. By the way, this is like triple toned. It's kind yeah. of a new thing. Yeah, very it's interesting. Cool. I approve, WizKids. Um, so that character, moving from anywhere else on the map. A character with the tag marker that moves must roll for breakaway as if it was adjacent to Plastic Man. And, if it's within range, can be targeted by Plastic Man with a close attack. He does have a four range. So, if I hit you, most likely, you're still within my range. You're going to have to try and break away. Yep. Doesn't he also have plasticity? I'm getting to that. Hold on. <laughs> when the character successfully breaks away, is hit with an attack... Or Plastic Man fails a shape change roll, remove the marker. So it comes off on one of those three things. So you're going to lock somebody down. You don't want somebody hitting them. You don't want them breaking away. And uh, it's hit with an attack. So if you yeah. hit the person tag marker, it yeah, comes off. Yeah, that's the one I covered first. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. So that's weird. And then there's the next thing he has. Um, so the damage power he gets on his first click is immeasurably powerful, absolutely nuts. When Plastic Man is given a non-free action, choose one, sidestep, comma, tiny size, comma, normal damage symbol, comma, or giant size. Plastic Man can use the chosen power or has the chosen symbol until Plastic Man chooses again. So basically, once you move, pick one of those things and he has it until you choose again. So giant size, giant reach two, tag, and you're locked down. You're not next to me, but you're still considered next to me. While well, I have plasticity in my whole dial, you can't break away. If I don't hit you, you don't. You're stuck there. He pretty much just locks down one character. How many points is he? Seventy. But the problem is he only has plasticity on the last four clicks of his dial. Mm -hmm. Top dial, he is stealth. So push him. But then you lose the damage power at that point too. Mm. So click three is kind of your sweet spot. Maybe even click four with ten attack versus nine attack and two. This seems like a very niche dial that's hard to get right where you want to be. I feel the tag marker is better when you have plasticity. No, oh, that's easily fixed. We'll give him the left relic. <laughs> plasticity and combat reflexes. Yeah, you're not wrong. And he gets to hit you as if he was next to you once you've got that. So if I if I move away, I'm carried away, or. Giant size, easier breakaway. I believe the Venom ID card also gives plasticity, right? I believe so. That sounds right. But, I mean, there's there's a lot of... He's just very particular. He's a tie-up piece. In yes. a different way of tie-up. Usually when we think of tie-up, we think of somebody who's just going to die, or somebody who's got plasticity, or somebody who's got in-cap. He's got pretty much all of those. Just really... And, you know, he can still punch them. And when he punches them... He can basically reassign the tag marker because it goes away when they get hit. Yes. So he just locks you down and just says, "Say, Uncle," until you're until you're done. I, I think his whole role is literally to keep someone stuck. That's I think that's what he's trying to do. But think about it. You've got a seventy-point character tying down their two hundred-point character who can't do diddly. That sounds like something Plastic Man would do. Um, the only thing he has that I have problems with him mean, is eighteen defense top dial. Woo, that's awesome. Toughness shape change. Middle dial, 16, 17s. I get it. We have shape change. It's really, really good. And then 18 has the 18 with shape change still because the trait and has regen. And on a four, it goes back to top dial. I love that. Uh, tiny size. You get plus one to your defense at you range. Know. Perplex. Every other click, you could be rocking a 20 defense with him. Yeah, sidestep. He could move away and hide better. Oh, man. So he does have poison on two of his last two clicks as well, so they base him. He can do some feedback damage there. I like it. Very interesting figure. I'm really excited to play him at some point. I love just league teams. They're my favorite. So I think I'll make a good addition to those teams. I would think he's confusing because we've never really seen a character designed that way. Usually we're looking at close combat, range combat, in cap, tie down, support. This guy, he's 
he's out in no man's land right now. He's kind of a tie down, tie up piece with a huge defense who can attack you from distance, lock you down in place, come back to life. Don't want to stand next to him because he might poison you, but you're still plasticity locked in anyway. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. That it, this, it really feels like they took every peripheral lockdown ability and they just put it into one guy. You know, and just said, there you go. Have fun. For cool. 70 points. And JLA allows him to take his move actions without taking towards your action pool. Which is very important these days, guys. Don't don't knock that anymore because we're playing six figures on our teams now in three-pointer point games, and that free move could be very, very helpful. All right, up next, Bane. Oh, the Bane. I was so happy when I finally got this guy. 11 clicks deep. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to say this right out the gate. Do not be afraid to venom him up or push him or get him in the fight. Eric and I both played him. We both babied him. We're used to seven clicks deep. And then we're checking his dial afterward like, he's still going. How, how much more of this figure did I have? I, he's just, wow. Charge his whole dial. That's it. Just one power. Uh, how he deals with the bat, uh, modify close attacks by plus one. Really not that bad for passing off anywhere from a 10 to a 12, depending on how deep in his dial he is. And then his Venom Pump, kind of double-edged sword here, but definitely makes him scary. Give him a free action and place one or two Venom tokens on his card. You increase his attack and damage values by the, uh, and reduce damage dealt to him by the number of Venom tokens on his card. So you're looking at a Toughness or Invuln with a plus one or two to both attack and damage, depending on how many of those you put on there. And then at the beginning of your turn, remove all Venom tokens from his card and deal him unavoidable damage equal to the number of Venom tokens removed. So, I mean, wow. He, when he gets up in your face, he is scary. And then, uh, you know, I mean, I've had him in my face when Eric was playing, and I just, I was like, I don't want to deal with five damage. Go away. Shoo. One thing, uh, weaknesses, I mean, unless you're Venom tokening it, He's going to be taking a lot of damage. He does have deep dial to make up for it. I dare say drop a whole cluster torch on him. Reduce damage by four if you've got those Venom tokens. They're not going to get to him. It's just Bane wearing an Iron Man suit. That That's a frightening thought. Dude, the fact that he could, with that, with a whole cluster, reduce four damage because it's not invulnerability he gets from it. Well, that's... it's it's still penetrating damage, so well, he penetrating still, still reduces. Through. So. Pensai can still get him, Exploit can still get him, but you can't outwit either at that point. Yes. So, I mean, minus four, what are you going to do? Punch me, Batman? <laughs> get that scene in the chills oh. where he punches him. It's just like, ow. <laughs> but uh, weaknesses, mind control. You guys saw it in the battle box. I could have made him Venom up again and just take four unavoidable damage. He should have had his Battle Fury the whole dial, too. Real, no or, or at least when he to. hits the Venom. I could see that. He could have battle for the venom, yeah. But I mean, if they've got a mind controller, don't don't venom him up. You're gonna you're gonna have problems. I could have wasted numerous number of Eric's figures with him, but I was just like, I don't want to have to deal with Bane right now. He can go away. Um, yeah, and you know, super strength. I think would have been nice to have just so you didn't have to venom up to get the plus twos. But I can understand where you're going with him. Again. That's super deep dial. Do not be afraid to push him. Do not be afraid to venom him. Just get him in there and just wreck face for 105 points. Why and if not? you're fighting against him, focus fire. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Everything you got into that dial, just kill it. Or outwit. That another weakness. Cancel that charge. He's not going anywhere fast. Nope. Now, things to make him better. We mentioned the Hulkbuster torso. The symbiote. Give him plasticity. Possible plus ones. Auto breakaway. I mean, and shape change. And shape change. <laughs> Dude, if he had shape change, Oof. he would look awesome. Bane with venom times two. Oh, two man. times the venom. Oh, that's <laughs> overdosed at that point. Um, get him some TK to get him into the fight. Um, but yeah, just get him in there and just beat people. Uh, pair him with somebody who can support him. Again, big theme of the set. Get him in there, get him out of there, heal him up, get him back in there. But, you Support know, is a good way to help him, too. La last two clicks is 12 attack, 4 damage, 17 and 18 defense. With the Venoms, you're looking at 12 and or 14 and 6 on your attack with the equivalent of invulnerable. But you're going to be pushing yourself to death. Watch out point. for outsiders. Yep. 
Bloop doo doo. But yeah, that's uh, that's Bane. I, I love the depth of his dial, and he he's a, a train looking to run you over, but not completely invulnerable. Speaking of not invulnerable, check out this Clayface guy. Clayface. He has Invincible. <laughs> so, this guy was really interesting in our last battle box we played with him. Our, do we have a battle time yet? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. That was the one where you had Bane and Clayface together. Exactly. He's super slow. He needs assistance as far as movement, any kind of TK, flight, something. Get him going. I have not realized in his how I deal with the bat trait that if you borrow his attack with close attack you can take his mud marker and throw it on the guy I did not know that I have never seen a effects of to token affect somebody else because you borrowed his attack stats yep so you're this is how I deal with the bat I just throw him in a big glob of mud so throw him in a big glob of mud <laughs> that's pretty cool all right and his other trait is of course smother you when clayface hits an opposing character with a close attack after it's resolved, you may place the mud marker in a square occupied by the hit character, removing it from anywhere else. Characters occupying a square with the mud marker are dealt one damage at the end of their turn. When actions resolve and no character occupies the same square as a mud marker, remove it from the map. So nothing is sticking him to that mud marker, but he has plasticity his entire dial, so it's assumed you are punching them. They didn't get knocked back, and you're sticking to them to do it. Plastic Man and Clayface. Ooh. <laughs> Tag, smother, double plasticity, you're not going anywhere. That figure's just stuck. <laughs> you're not going anywhere, and you're going to be taking damage the whole time. Ugh. Throw a little Hydro Man in there for some water <laughs> bubble. Just penetrate, drown penetrate, him can't move, trouble, <laughs> drown, <laughs> smother. Just, just lock somebody down. It's not down. penetrating, but it is one damage. So, it's like we said, the number of reducers has definitely gone down with the last few sets. So, I, well, when I look at this now, I'm like saying, okay, it could be more viable. I just always think of reducers because when I started playing, they were everywhere. Everybody had them. You get toughness. You get toughness. You get vulnerability. You get you get impervious. Even invincible. It stops invincible. I wish it was only. I wish it was two damage at least. That way, toughness or invincible was like one. Yeah. Think about it. We're like, I'm in mud, uh. Yeah, but think of who has Invincible. Superman, who can hold his breath long enough to be in space. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Plus he's an alien, so you know. <laughs> but his, his, his dial is no joke. He has three damage the entire dial. He has 18s and 17s, the whole dial, with Invincible, Impervious, and then Toughness. And it has 10s, 9s, 10, 11, the very last click there with a big old death scream. And I rolled a crit miss on that attack. He did. That's the worst part. That was the worst part. I almost had that game, guys. It was that attack. I think it was so bad. Back close. It would have would have tilted the scale. Dang those dice. Um, weaknesses. Um, slow, like I said. He's just so yeah. slow. Carry him in there and drop him next to somebody and let him wreak havoc. Make him stronger. Yeah. Flight. TK. Anything that makes him get going in there. Otherwise, he's a great figure. Um, Bab Enemy. Show those attacks around. He has 10s. Give him 11. So somebody else. Joker has it. Shiva has 12. Could have given him a 12 attack. Calculator with 12. Shiva. Well, Shiva, well. yeah. That's that's play face, guys. All right. Up next, the Joker. We will commonly refer to this one as the Killing Joke Joker because he is in his uh, vacationing gear with the camera from the storyline. Uh, Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Underworld, and Injustice League. Uh, you guys had a chance to see me run this in the battle box. He is amazing for... 140 points. I know, sounds steep, but trait, it's the last thing that will kill you. The Joker can use poison, period. When he does, damage dealt to characters with a lower point value is penetrating damage at 140 points. Gee, let's look at the set real fast here. That one can't be poisoned? And everybody else. Penetrating poison. Yeah, that's that's how that boils down. That's pretty much how it looks in Superior Foes of Spider-Man too, except for like Ares and Whoa. Moreland. Yep. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and then uh, Uncanny X-Men, uh, Phoenix. Uh, Dark Angel. Dark Angel. Cameron Hodge, was he? Yeah, he's up there. He's up there. That's about it. So, yeah, penetrating poison for the most part. Uh, Matt is a Hatter, secondary trait. 
he uh, other characters can't use precision strike when attacking the joker so that also means for your dual targets if you're going to target the joker you can't precision strike anybody else either yep blah 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 uh defensive power that he has on his last click stop the joker can use mastermind that's right can't be outwitted and i mastermind it and you can't stop me from uh by using precision strike I, I need people next to me they're gonna protect me and then his attack power which he has every other click starting with his first click and on his last click uh the joker can use range combat expert and ignores character bases for line of fire period when the joker hits with an attack hit characters are each given up to two action tokens wow close range doesn't matter you're pushed out I'm, I'm just going to assign you up to two. Make sure you push out. It's not an in-cap, so assigning an additional two when they have one isn't going to do anything for you. But I'm going to push you out, and you're going to stand there for your next turn. Hopefully, right next to me, so I can penetrate and poison you at the beginning of my next turn. So giving him more bolts is a great idea, yeah? Wow, yes. Goodness. I mean, doesn't one of the Hulkbuster arms do that? I don't know that it does. I know the Thor ID card does. I know the Doc Ock arms in Golden Age. Oh, that's golden, though. Take oh. it up on a six. You feeling lucky? Oh. <laughs> Doesn't that give you three extra yep. bolts? It gives you three additional bolts. Oh, my gosh. It's just hit, huh? Yep. On the damage, you just picked four targets and tokens. Yep. Grr. Oh, man. Lock down a whole team with that. Let's see that in Golden Age. So, Batman enemy TA. But, you know, he really doesn't need it. 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 12. So, I mean, you're really handing out your attack values at that point. And he goes, stealth, sidestep, stealth, sidestep, stealth, sidestep, stealth. Um, mastermind. Uh, blades and... Blades, precision, blades, precision, blades, precision, so precision. So consistent, this guy. <laughs> you know, he's supposed to be chaotic, but it's very consistent. <laughs> and then uh, mastermind, mastermind, super senses, super senses, toughness, toughness, stop, click. And then uh, range combat expert, outwits, alternating all the way to the end. Wow. It just, wow. And the best 30 point message you can put on this guy? Joker thugs. Just gave him those thugs, just like we did in the battle box. I was like, oh, this Joker's immortal. The funny thing is, he could have added one more thug to that team. We just didn't have any more. We anymore. didn't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, how, it's crazy how uncommon that common figure is, because, like, we've seen very few. How many do you guys have? Let us know in the comments below. Indeed. But, uh, yeah. You know, running up and basing Batman and just being like, okay, are you going to take the poison or deal with the blades? <sighs> wow. <laughs> this guy, man. Amazing. Best, Absolutely amazing. One of the best jokers ever. Six range and then, you know, range combat expert. You don't want to be close to me. You don't want to be within six squares. It's just, it's brutal. Yeah, indeed. 140 points well spent. Any weakness whatsoever? Uh, you know, if you don't have something to mastermind him off, he really... Right to the top. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff that he could use. Stealth, uh, super senses, toughness, but that stop click's the only thing saving him at that point. I mean, you've got a lot to get through. you got to be able to bust stealth. you got to have... Well, you can't even use precision strike to get past his uh, super senses mid-dial, so you just got to hit him hard starting off and make sure he doesn't have anybody next to him. So you think uh, Hulk Press Torso wouldn't be terrible either just because a reducer could 150 points, half my team, for uh, the absolute chaotic, rampaging, killing joke Joker. Sign me up. Maybe uh, somebody out for some shape change. Plasticity. Plasticity. <laughs> really, really I, I actually, video? I think the Lust Relic. Plasticity, sidestep, and combat Reflex. reflexes would be nuts he wouldn't be he'd have nothing less than a 19 with possible stealth and i'm locking you down next to me while i'm penetrating poisoning you and either precision strike or blades claws now you thought there was only one joker that was really good in the set Ugh. besides the common rare and the red hood <laughs> and the super rare that we just covered have you met the ha 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 joker <laughs> the ha ha joker also uh i hear he's gaining the name the unkillable joker now yes you are not wrong and here is why ha ha who hum <laughs> <laughs> trait when... <laughs> you're really just mm. <laughs> yeah 
the evil slips out. You can hear it. <laughs> when building your force, the Joker costs 10 points for each escape token you place on this card. Minimum of 3, which means 30 points. Max of 5, 50 points, as his dial dictates. When the Joker heals or takes damage, remove one escape token from his card for each green or red line that he crosses. So on his dial, you see there, he has a green starting line where he starts, and in the middle there, on click six or seven, has a red line. So every six clicks, he'll cross a line. Exactly. From there, um, when there are no escape tokens on his card, KO the Joker. At the end of the game, or if the Joker is KO'd, your opponent scores no points for the Joker. Instead, scores 10 points for each escape token that was removed. So you do get points for working on him. Yes. Which means, even though you didn't kill him at the end of the game, if you at least got through one escape token, you scored 10 points. That's an ultra heavy. That's a punch from a KC Superman. On a 50 point figure. Why would you do that to yourself? Was it worth it? <laughs> I don't know. Depends on what else is on your team. Continuing on. Hoo hoo hoo. Ha ha ha. <laughs> At the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6 and half the result. When you do, either heal or damage the Joker that many clicks, and he can heal past his starting line. So, he starts off with Stealth and Outwit. And Indom. Couple. Let's say you want something else. Roll a d6. You can go ahead and roll a d6 and look at your dial and say, well, I would love to get down to maybe... Running shot or charge? If I roll a, oh, a two, or let's see, half, I, can I ever charge? I don't think so. Let's see, one, two, three, yeah. No? It's half the result, right? Three so is the most you can ever get. One, two, three. Or you could heal that many and go the other direction. Okay, that's right. But if you but heal you, pass, you'll lose an escape token. Exactly. So be careful on the heals, guys. But... You can kind of almost guess we're going to go and roll and count your dial. Which I'm, Don't is, even have to guess. Just look at the back of your card. This is the best like, reason to have a dial in the back of the card. is because you actually can see where you're going to end up on a half result of a D6. But, uh, yeah. This is the craziest dial that you've ever had. Stats are the same. The entire dial. 7, 10, 17, 1. End on. Now, aside from that is one more trait. Hee <laughs> hee. Ha ha. <laughs> the Joker can use sidestep and super senses. So, stealth, he's like, I'll hide, sure. I'm going to start tiptoeing my way up the board every turn. Just whoop, whoop, come on, man. Whoop, come Outweigh you, prison strike. Outweigh you. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yep, roll dice. You haven't hit me yet. I'm going to go ahead and just go to poison. Poison you. I have plasticity. Ah. You're stuck by me. Ha, ha, ha. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so, the reason why it's called the unkillable Joker... As Mike has said, every six clicks, he could hit that red marker, or green marker, and so on and so forth. If you do the math on that, that's six clicks deep, right? At 50 points, and that's one, two, that's three, four, five. That's five tokens times six clicks is 30, 30 clicks of, of life. life. He's got more than a Quinjet. Yes, he does. And he has super senses. He can roll out of it. And he's only 50 points. You can play three Joker thugs, and they can take the hits for him. This is a mastermind, but that's okay. They say Joker's on the board. I'll just take a tech for you, Mr. Joker. Regardless of uh, anything, precision strike, they just take the attack. Yep. Ugh, you punched me in the goon. Favorite, favorite flavor text. And then, on top of that, you know who does have mastermind would love a 50-point... 30 damage drop off would be that guy. The Joker Mike just covered. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it off to my other, more crazy self. Now, weaknesses to this Joker no reducers. But that's okay. Hulkbuster torso. Hulkbuster torso. Blah. Why not? Blah. Blah. Making Blah. him better, Proteus. <laughs> Plus one. Plus one. Oh, I take damage. I don't he care. will burn all day and not even care because he'll heal it up later. Mm. Joker thugs always make it better. Joker thugs, giving people, giving those pawn offs. Yeah. Wow. Boost him up. Make him better. 
30 clicks alive, guys, for 50 points. Even at 30 points. 30 clicks. 15 clicks at 30 points. And, that is unheard of. And with those 30 points, so you don't knock me past one of my starting lines. You get me just before it. Oh, I'm going to roll a D6 nice. and bip, 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 I'm back. I would say one of his weaknesses is the inconsistency of his dial. Exactly. You'll you never cannot know. rely on a power. You'll never know what you have, which is very thematic for the Joker. Like, Batman said it himself, I don't know what he's going to do. I never know what he's going to do. Which is why I love Joker so much. He is exactly what Joker should be. Completely unpredictable. Bonkers. Yes. And he is immortal. Like, seriously? I know. When, he could be killed so many times. When had, did the Joker die? He died in uh, the Arkham Asylum storyline. Probably. I haven't read that one. You have to tell well, the story. It was the, it was the video games. Oh, in the video games. Yes. Uh, Arkham City. And then he died in Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. Yep. But and, that's, that's about it. And in Justice, when Superman punched the gut out of him. <laughs> oh. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> All right. So that concludes our super rares. Uh, we're moving on to the chases. We did manage to acquire four of these wonderful creatures. Uh, the Aquaman is thanks to... David. Our friend David. David from the shop. Thank you for loading this to us. And uh, we'll get this back to you uh, once we see you again. So. If you guys can tell, the only sketch figure in our entire collection we have here... We, we did have other sketches, but we do like to put the colored versions out. We only put the sketch out if that was the only one we were able to acquire. Yep. So, uh, starting off, Bizarro Wonder Woman. She's so cool. Um, keyword, monster. They all have the monster keyword, that's it. They're all 50 points, and if I'm not mistaken, their dials are all the same. Just about. Mostly the, the ranges, ranges are a little different. Range is different, but mostly the same. All right, so Wonder Woman, attack power. She can, uh, you can give her a close or range action, so three range, targeting a friendly character that deals no damage. If she hits, remove an action token from the target. It's inverted in cap. Yep. I'm going to take a token off of you. And then uh, stop click on her last two clicks, and she can use toughness. Sidestep first three clicks, starts with invuln, goes to toughness. You know, she walks, carry her around, let her just basically litter ship you on 11 attack. Just, I'm going to punch you and uh, remove an action token. Have fun. The penguin. Yep. 11 attack, 18 on the penguin. It's, it's a 7. Better. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. And he can defend her up to an 18. <laughs> oh, and there go the penguin bots. <laughs> Um, yeah, weaknesses, well, you know, not a whole lot going on as far as damage. One click. These these Bizarro figures, they've really set them up to focus on their special power and using it to its fullest, so she's more of a fancy leadership, in my opinion. But it's a three-range leadership and with, you know, the equivalent of an in-cap with an 11 attack, so there's dice rolls involved there. But she's only 50 points. She is also unique, so no thinking about running multiples ever. But, uh, yeah, definitely could be worth it. You know, a bit of a bullet sponge, too. Yeah. Got those two stop clicks. You can put her out there, tie somebody up as she's tied herself up with her lasso of lies. Yep. All right. So we're missing the one after that, which I think is <sighs> Bat Zaro. Yeah, I believe that was Bat Zaro. Unfortunately, we don't have it here. If so. you guys want to review Bat Zaro for us, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and post in the comments below. I believe his special power was you can target a character and that power that you, you basically anti-outwit. Yes. So it cannot be countered. Yep. You just pick a power and say, okay, you cannot counter my charge, which would be really good for Bane. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. So next to him, we have Bizarro Joker. The saddest man alive. So he has a trait that gives him plasticity, and adjacent characters modify their attack values by minus one. That is really stellar. I'm gonna go stand next to you. He just ties you up, saying, "Hi, buddy. Oh, I'm I make sad. You depressed? <laughs> I should be. Do you want some ice cream? Oh, I dropped it on the ground. <laughs> so that right there makes him great. It's a great tie-up and gives him minus ones to attacks for 45 points. Same sets as the Wonder Woman, just powers are in different spots. Noted, he is not unique. Not. He's the only one. Nope. 
Oh, Aqua. Nope. Aquaman's not either. It is Aqua. I'm not sure if Batman and... Batman is, and Batman Hot is, Girl is. And Hot Girl is, okay. Yep. So two of them are not unique. Okay. His attack power is, at the beginning of your turn, give Bizarre Joker a free action and heal him of one damage for each adjacent opposing character. So he has reverse poison. Which is insane, because he has plasticity. So you put him in a group of people, he has a multi down... And he's healing from them. He's healing from them. With that stop click. Two, two stop two clicks. Two stop clicks. And he keeps going back up the dial. Just lock down their whole team. Just be like, deal with my Joker for a minute. And then he has, on the last click, of course, stop with toughness. So, po unless they have Petrang poison, he's not getting poisoned back either. So that's no pretty Dom. You could in-cap him. You can in-cap him. You can clearly mind control him away. Something you can do. They are all weak to outwit. None of their powers can't be outwitted except for their stuff that's on the very end. Um, making him better, honestly, the fact that he has plasticity, if any of your teams do a lot of you can't be damaged or I mean, you you, uh, you want to run away like hypersonic, those kinds of like anti-hypersonic are like poison, like clay face ties you down, this guy ties you down. There's a team. He wants to poison you. Joker, clay face, plastic man. You're not going anywhere. You're just done. <laughs> you, we're going to stand next to you. We're going to have a party. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Joker. All right. And then I uh, believe we're missing Bizarro Hawk Girl at that point. Um, she does inverted close combat, combat expert. expert. So you hit, or somebody goes to hit you with a close combat attack. I believe you have to make her the target if she's yes. adjacent to them. And you can give her an action token and reduce either attack or damage or both. Both. By minus one. Right. Well, attack by two, damage by two, or both by minus one. All right. Up next, Bizarro Aquaman, who I will affectionately call Bizaqua. Bizaqua. Um, monster, of course. 45 points. Me can't swim. I, You know, with this Bizarro language, I question, is he talking about himself? Is he talking about you? Is he saying you can swim? Is he saying he can't swim? What is really going on here? I'm confused. I want to shake the man's hand to keep him with Bizarro speak because that was, must have been a fun little project. Oh, man. Characters within six squares of Bizaqua can't use the swim ability. Wow. I'm just canceling your swim power. What's sad is that's even your own. So keep yeah. that in mind, guys. You, if you guys are bringing a swim team, maybe don't bring Bizaqua with you. <laughs> but he would help so much. Because you can give him a power action to place up to six water terrain markers in distinct adjacent squares within four squares. He makes a big puddle. <laughs> and at least one of the terrain markers must be within line of fire when it's placed, and the terrain markers remain until your next turn. No, I mean, sure, it stops other Smoke opposing... Smoke cloud water. It makes other opposing swimmers not able to come at you either. Because the second they hit six, they lose their swim and have to be stuck in the water, right? Yeah, because they'd walk up and they'd have to stop in the water. It's a good defensive line, but I mean, if you had characters like uh, Death Adder, yes. make a nice six line, or uh, Tiger Shark, who uh, if the character's been hit and they're in water, he gets a bonus to his attack. Hydro Man, those are water markers. He could technically absorb them. But... Wouldn't Death Adder, if he was in the water, he loses his fish symbol, therefore he wouldn't grow water for movement purposes? If he's within those six squares, but he does have sidesteps, so he could make that and then sidestep back. Eh, I guess you're right. So. Okay. Got you. So there's some uses there, not as many as you might hope for with a Bizarro Aquaman, but hey, you don't have any swimmers and you just need water for whatever reason, go for it. Yeah. Out. It's really good, too, with, like, Killer Croc. His yes. Batman, um, deal with the bat is if they occupy water, he does plus two of the attack. Now, Croc would lose his swimming capabilities if he's within six squares, but... You're hoping at that point you're already punching them. And, all right, so we've got Croc at 50, Calculator at 50, Bizaqua at 45. You're the half your team at that point. Yeah. You could fill. You could really make that kind of your theme deal. Make something work. So, uh, you know, if you got him, he's not completely worthless. You just really got to think outside of the box. All right. And last but not least, we have Bizarro Green Arrow. Bizarro. Bizarro. Aptly named. 
This guy is the one that everyone has their eye on. Hubbub and hubbub and. He is literally something else. He has by himself for 50 points now put a damper on everyone as far as the metagame goes. And here's why. His hat does say donuts, by the way. It may just say nuts in the picture, but it does say donuts. You had to look at that, didn't you? I did. It was, it's a question on the forums. Does it actually say donuts? It yes. actually says donuts. It does the say donuts. O is really tiny, though, so it looks like it says D nuts. <laughs> it, it really does. They, they made the O There's like no a dot. There's no Z in there, guys. <laughs> it's, it, the, the O is so tiny. Look at that, Eric. The, the O is so tiny. It looks like it says D nuts. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyways. Monster keyword. Trait says, me, the world's greatest archery target. When an adjacent friendly character would be targeted by an attack, Bizarro Green Arrow becomes the target instead, even if it would be an illegal target. So right there, no matter what, whoever your opponent picks on your team to shoot at, if Bizarro Green Arrow is next to that person, this is the new target. Unless he's within the range of a pulse wave. Because yes. that ignores all game effects. Now, if he's outside the range and he's pulse, the person next to him is getting pulse waved, he becomes the attack instead. Yep. Even if it would be illegal. That's... wow. Out of range, out of line of fire. It's like, I want to shoot your 150-point character, but you're making me target your 50-point guy. Precision strike stopping. Mastermind. Nope. Joker would very much benefit from this guy all day moving on the other thing makes him ridiculous is his whole dial he has this damage power called bizarro range combat expert when bizarro green arrow is the target of an attack you may give him an action token to modify the attacker's attack value by minus two its damage value by minus two or both by minus one so essentially reverse range combat expert he has invulnerability, top click. If they have four damage, you can make it two. And if they hit you, reduced. To nothing. To nothing. If they have an 11 attack, make it a nine. Make that's, them, a, that's a tough roll. Make them wish they could hit you. And sure, you're only a 17. But he's standing next to defend 18. It's nine or better to hit me. Good luck with that. That's a nine or better. I Honestly, the damage, the damage is usually a better call depending on what kind of reducer he has. Or if you have a way to kind of roll out of it or something mm -hmm. like that. Or anything you can possibly think of to help you there. He, if you put him in Hindering, obviously you can pull something the Hindering bonus. Because that would take effect. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Weaknesses. Energy explosion. Yes. We've seen it happen. Energy explosion reads, if the attack deals damage. Not meaning that he's taken damage or that he was assigned damage. If the attack deals damage. I've, I've looked at the wording, and I could be corrected on this, but as far as I, I, I looked at it, I posted it on HG Realms, uh, even correcting myself, because I was hoping that if I reduce, you know, the amount of damage you're dealing, so say you're shooting with a 3, I reduce you to 1, and then you hit me for 1 because I have invul, you didn't deal me any damage, or I didn't take any damage, therefore the energy explosion would go off. From what I've read, that is not true because your attack still deals damage, such as MCAP does not deal damage or Mind Control does not deal damage, but a regular shot would. Even though I did not, take. even I reduced the damage, I didn't take damage, the energy explosion still goes off and still hits my adjacent friendlies. And they were not targeted with an attack, they were just part of the AoE, so the damage does not bounce back to me. So watch out for that. That does seem 100% right. Because you are still doing damage even if it is reduced. Correct. Um, yeah, that's a big weakness. Also, if their team has no range attackers, you basically blew 50 points. Which could be a thing now, guys. You could make a whole team based on your hoping your opponent has a bunch of Nick Furies or other range attackers. They'd be like, well, I thought about this figure you have on your team, uh, and I have built all close combat. We're playing spiders now. Deal with it. <laughs> Or with the round table, sub in, they've got a really great range character, and they just go, ah, I'm more suited for your Bizarro. All close combat. Exactly. But that, but that's the thing, guys. That new teleporter guy, thing right there, if you see a 
Green Arrow, Bizar uh, Bizarro Green Arrow on your opponent's team, and you have the option to use your sideline to change out your like Hawkeye you have on your team for something else. Spider Man. Spider Man. A mid well, not Midnighter because he's not one, but he'd be so good. <laughs> he'd be so um, good. Uh, Shang Chi, maybe. Oh yeah, Shang Chi. Be a good shit. Switch out. Just anything that's more close combat. Do it. Yeah, that's why it's there. Better. So if you see this figure, you'd be like, well, I don't want to shoot you anymore, so team can be kind of changed up. More primary attacker for like a Superman even. Superman's a great close combat attacker. So there you go. Just thoughts, guys. And that concludes Lastly, my thoughts on the figures. We have the Joker gas canister. Um, this is the prize piece, the prize item that comes at the release. At the release. Uh, it's a really interesting, I forgot to grab the card, but if I remember correctly, it is a light object. I wish it would have been an ultra light so that every good buddy could pick it up and throw it. Um, if, the, uh, if there is a character that's the target of an object attack with this item, or the item is destroyed next to a character, you may pick one of those characters and assign them the gas marker. They get Battle Fury, plus one to their attack. Plus two to their attack. Plus two to their attack and minus one to their defense. That's what it is. I'm pretty sure. And at the beginning of each turn, you roll a d6, and on either a one or a six, uh, they lose it. Yes. So you could actually blow up an item next to one of your characters to increase their attack, but they gain Battle Fury and they reduce their defense. Or you could throw it at somebody or blow, the, blow it up next to them, and then they get it. Uh, it could be TK'd at them. Definitely a lot of options here. I just really wish they made it an ultralight because it is a smaller object. And I think you should have been able to throw it eight squares and everybody should have been able to pick it up and throw it around. Would have made it fantastic. That, it was very interesting too because you had it in our last battle box and you didn't even... It, it, it was just it was in an odd position. I couldn't really use it. And I believe this is six points. Five points? Five, six points? Something like that. Right around there. Sorry guys, you brought the card. We were afraid of that item, but... All right, well, that, uh, that sums up our Super Rares, Chases, and Special Object review. Hope you guys found, found this information useful. Please, if we left anything out or uh, didn't cover an aspect of a figure that you think is important, comment below. We'd love to hear from you guys, as you well know. And, uh, you know, we do, do this for the community, and uh, we just want to make sure that everybody is on point and ready to use these figures to their fullest. Hopefully, Because we have a WKO coming up soon. And these will be some, hopefully, head stars in those coming events. Continue, sorry. Whatever, Quinjets, all the way. That's all we'll see. Um, hopefully this has been helpful to you guys to figure out if these figures are worth chasing down, putting the money into. Uh, most of the chases now are right around uh, $30 to $35 save the zero just because of the massive impact he has. I've seen him as high as 60 now. Um, but uh, overall, a lot of these will go anywhere from 10 to $30 on the super rare side. Um, you see them low price, pick them up. Man Bat particularly high at the moment just because he's an amazing sculpt. Mr. Freeze came out of the box at 35 He's come down to 25 30 somewhere right along there. But uh, yeah, take a look. And uh, of course, the super rare chase that we didn't get to cover is still rocking $90 just because he is amazing. Really wish we could have covered him for you. If one of you guys have him, please do a quick review in the description for everybody to know why he is so awesome and why he is to be feared in the upcoming Meta Circuits. Well, guys, we'll see you guys in the next few videos. And remember, strike first and strike hard.